Mellow greetings, Engineer Bob here. Today we're returning back to our lunar start on the public servers. Last we left off, we had just turned turtle. Let's go ahead and write this rover and continue on our start. See if we can't help ourselves out a little bit. Even though these blocks are unconstructed, they still have their full mass. So I will pull all of you out, which should help a little bit. Dump it in here and see if I can't get myself righted. Or is that kind of cheesy way I can do it? Since I've unlocked pistons, I could potentially use that. We're going to try the gyro override, uh, which I do not have. And that's probably why I fell over, because I was trying to manipulate my vehicle with the gyro and it was not responding. It's because I had ground it down. Let's add our gyro here. We can tap this guy. We'll get our components. We might actually need to tag one from that uh, yeah, large steel tube. I know there's three inside this head. I need to be very careful about pulling them out. Because this rotor part does not have a lot of material in it. I got them. So I can pair this. And I will put those tubes back in here. So now that's still functional. I just needed the one tube for this guy. Let's see if we can get this gyro work for me here. Now I can go into the gyro specifically and change the override. Because of the orientation of the gyro, I wasn't paying attention. I don't actually know which way it will go. So I will just move these a little bit and see if that is what I want. It looks like I got it right. Right direction. And there we go force it all the way over. There we go. Nice and gentle. Awesome. So now I've recovered my vehicle using a bit of gyro override there. And I can go back into the gyro override. And since even though I turned it back to zero, I want to turn this off because I want to be able to manipulate the gyro instead of keeping it at a zero. Uh, might need to turn it down a skosh because we are running very top heavy. Uh, we'll deal with that next time. For now, let's go ahead and get some iron. So our pit is over here. Let's go ahead and park and do a little bit of surveying for it. There we go. Again, we'll go out zoom out and we want iron and cobalt are going to be our two primary pieces right now go for some of this cobalt first looks to be pretty decent there look down and crouch to drill now the neat thing about this cobalt is that it goes pretty far so we don't need a whole bunch of it but what we do want is just a handful at the moment so while we're trying to minimize our hand drilling, I'm doing this little bit of excavation so I can actually drive into the pit that I'm trying to build here. Perfect. So this kind of blue is cobalt. We'll double left click now and we'll be able to produce the cobalt. I'm gonna knock off some of the stone that's around it too. That's pretty common and we'll just take it all. Kind of pick this up as we go, just holding F. Once our backpack gets full, we can jump out. We really wanted just exclusively the cobalt. Probably best not to have drilled straight down, but I'll take this stone too. Just for now, because if I dumped it in that hole with me, it would be a bit of a pain. 
come over here, drop in on our vehicle, and with a bit more of that cobalt exposed, we should get a lot more cobalt as opposed to just that little bit that we had achieved. And I want that cobalt because it'll allow me to make metal grids, which will allow me to rework my my stationing of or my staging of items on my rover and be able to build that larger refinery. At this point, I can probably make a base fairly safely. If you look at F3 on a server, you can see how many folks are around. And if there aren't that many folks, you're probably safe. Safer, at least. But not to say that you're ever really 100% safe as long as anyone else is around. Most folks aren't too malicious, but it's always good to know that uh, you can build relatively safely versus not. If you're in a very hostile area, then you probably don't want to build there. And as I had mentioned at the beginning, the moon can be a very hostile area. Okay, so we've got our refinery working that cobalt. And ideally, I could put a, a large grid small cargo container there, and that will push my refinery back. And then I can also push that assembler back as well. And that should limit our vertical and put more weight towards the back. And I can just extend the, the suspension by building a bit more of this rover. I do want to take note that this respawn pod very well could despawn on us so I don't want to do a whole lot to it because if I logged out I would lose everything and I don't want that but our we can check on our refinery here refinery and it's chewing away at that cobalt we're getting a lot of cobalt out of this and it takes a while so if we wanted other materials we could tell it to chip away at that stone first and then go back to working at that cobalt uh, we can do this exact same thing here. Let me come over to you. Since I know this is where the cobalt is. I know exactly where that ore deposit is. So if I wanted to make a mine driving into it, I know I have to start further away at a certain angle so that I can actually drive down the, the 20 meters or so that it's there. And I'll do the same thing with this iron. Let's try to find out where we're closest at here. Looks about here or so. We will go ahead and crouch, look down, and drill ourselves. There we go. And this red material is iron. So since we're here, go ahead and make another GPS. These are just temporary ones that I'm making. And that's just because I need to know where this ore actually is. So again, I can make a little strip to drive into and collect what I need. I got a lot of stone and a lot of iron. The stone will be turned into those iron ingots but the iron yields so much more and that's why you always want to go for the pure resource dump that in there and we can always check what's going on from this access port on our drill we can see we've got cobalt stone and iron it's not going to process these two materials until it's done with that one which means i'll constantly have to scooch these around in order to prioritize what I wanted to work on. And that's just part of the game. Uh, we'll need to get some more nickel because the production of the metal grids is going to consume a lot of nickel. Need to see how many grids I have on hand because I believe it's four I need to get the cargo container. And I have eight, which is perfect. So I'll give that a moment to work and try to think how far back I need to go. 
The sun should be over there somewhere. So I could actually build a little bit of base into the side of this mountain here. Or I could build it into a crater. I'm trying to think of what would be best as far as expansion and safety and whatnot. So that's probably going to be the easiest. So even though these are not hyped, I will do so this way. Let's break. And I want to work with my wheel suspension. I need to find out which wheel is which. It says they're all right wheels. That doesn't help. What I can do is stay stationary. See, all of my wheels are capable of turning. So if we turn steering off, notice that one of them isn't. So that way I can isolate which one that is. So you are actually right front. We can turn your steering back on. Turn your steering off. And then I can take my front and my rear tires and group them together. Front, front. And I can add a couple more groups to my hotbar here by changing their height offset or their suspension strength. I can kind of give myself a bit more of a stable angle to work with on this drill to change how steep I make my uh, my little ramps here. So I want to go with my increase height offsets and decrease height offset. There we go. So now I can control on these bars. I can make it pop up. I can make it scotch down a little bit. And this will enable me to control just a little bit more on how much my drill will either dig down or not. So with it as such, I should make a fairly slow dipping hole. And that's because this drill will remove area in a circle around the head. And that's a little bit harder to control than if it were a cube or such. I'll have to play with this a lot. It's our iron straight ahead and we will go for it. Unlock our handbrake and let's drill. You can see it's already making a little divot in front of us. It's not going to be enough for us to drive into and ideally we would have a couple more drills going but we can't at the moment because we need that assembler to make more tubes for us. scooch back and I can level us out a bit more at this point my rear suspension is maxed and I'm picking up just a little bit I don't expect to actually be going into this hole yet, and that's just because my wheelbase is too wide for it. We can see that I am starting to make a bit of a divot in here, and that is kind of what I want to see. It's like make my uh, initial run at it. And that's because I will need enough parts to finish this assembler so I can make a couple more drills and this rig will become a lot more effective. And what we also need to remember is that none of this stone is getting processed because it's prioritizing that cobalt because it just keeps popping in there. Uh, well, let's, let's go back over here real fast and go back to our little wall. And that's because over here at our wall we can just get stone so much easier and we're going to need to upgrade some drills. So we'll do that. Survival kit, what is your problem? I bet it's full, isn't it? Yeah. 
That's what I thought. Full. So with it being full, it can't actually pull the resources that it needs to actually continue building because it was just fat with stone and it wasn't actually doing anything with it. So it'll pull stone automatically, but we don't really want it to at the moment. So it's kind of shooting itself in the foot as it's trying to build other things. Now I have the capability of building large steel tubes out of here and I can get the rest of the materials I need from here. What I want to do for this drill is be able to articulate it just a bit. And that way I don't have to do all of the motion with the wheels. I can deal something with the drills themselves. I will start off by removing this. And I can frame up everything else that I want to do. This is a bit wasteful, but it'll give me some more connection points to work from. If I push that out one. And just trying to think of how much elevation I need here. Push this out two. And I can put a hinge in here. Don't want that. Take this hinge. Put this hinge here. And that's a big, big hinge. I can deal with the smaller hinge. The smaller hinge will still have things to pump through it. And let that sit there. Come back in. And while this hinge is still under construction, it's not going to be super helpful to me. I do want to lock it so it doesn't droop down, though. That's because I'm going to be putting my drills on it. I can do just that. There's my drill. And this drill has an attachment point on the side. I'll give it a little bit more width here. I want to say that these only had one more space on either side of them. This is probably too far. Then I can put this other drill here. There we go. Now I should have some articulation on my drills. Allow me to move up and down. And I can use these to control the grade of my ramps rather than the wheels back here. Let's get all of this welded up. That's one, two, and then two over there and two on the other side. I can get some components from here. Not a lot. Draw. And then tell you to build. And I will tell my refinery to start producing something with the stone. Oh crap, that hinge is in the way, isn't it? It's. Let me turn off. Not that the hinge is in the way, that it's not completed, so it's not passing anything through it. So a tube and a tube. Did you have tubes? You did, so I'll just take yours at the moment. Because I need those to pass through. Need one more tube. And I will take it from you. If I take it from you, I mean give me your stone. So that I can dump the stone into here. So that I can take your iron. And hopefully that's enough iron to make a tube so that I can go back and rebuild everything else. I'll have to rebuild that other drill head. And then regroup it again. But that's fine because now this will actually flow. Oop. We can see that... <laughs> The material started to rush towards the back of the rover from the drill heads, and that's why it tilted back there. Let's put our drill back in here. And now we can actually do something with our hinge. Turn it on off, and we should be able to reverse it as well. Just want to make sure for that negative direction. Let's mess with our hinge for a moment here. I will give you don't want you to go super low. We'll do this. 
make a 10 degree difference at the moment because if it goes too low it'll flip me over turn this off I want a braking torque and I want forward torque and let's give you a velocity of one so there's our upwards direction and let's reverse 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 hinge what are you doing reverse So our hinge upper limit needs to be probably there. 45 looked like it was decent, and that lower limit, minus 11. I'm going to go minus 5, really, because I don't want it pushing me down. Minus 5. Yeah, because that's still actually pushing me back, it feels like. Let's see when we get to something a little more level. Now we can go find our trench over here. We will want to make sure that we clear out any headspace, and that's because we do have all of our components above us at the moment. There we go. That's, that's about it right there. Something nice and gentle to slope into. And that didn't take much at all. Trying to make sure that I'm pushing back on our gyros that we enter slowly in. I don't want to remove too much too fast. It looks like our, our angles quickly become too steep again. Much too steep. Yeah. So we probably need even more angle up on the drills this is as high up as they go at the moment so that's not too steep to work with but what i do want is a higher angle on my hinge so we'll go to hinge and that'll be our upper limit that we're adjusting let's pull it back to there should give us some clearance and the mass removal should not mess with our assembler at the moment let's see if we can't do something else for ourselves that'll make our lives a lot easier backing out of here check out the progression and we're going to look up remotes should be able to get remote controls pretty easy as soon as we get cockpits, we should have access to remotes. So for playing on a new game, we should have access to remote controls. And what we want the remote control for is backing out of our hole. Instead of having to reverse everything all the time, we can just tell our remote control to take over, and then we can put a camera on that, and we'll be able to drive ourselves out a lot easier. Remote. And then part of the remote is the camera too. We'll take those, make sure our build planner is clear. Remote and camera, give me those components. Give me those components, build what you need. There we go, remote control and our camera. Perfect. We can put these on our hot bar in here. And I'll actually put these on the second page. Holding control and then hitting the numbers will allow us to swap to other pages. And we'll get to the remote control here. We'll put control. And then by actually hitting that button, we'll enter the remote controls panel now. So we see our hotbar change. And from here, I will make the camera view. And this is the rear view, so if I press forward on this, we would actually go forward on our rover. Part of this too is I need some of my rover's controls in here, which would mean I need the cockpits, and I need its handbrake to be turned on and off. Hitting F will exit the view, and then F again will exit the controller. So let's go forth and see if we can 
get this hole dug. Current goal for the hole is to level it out, and that might require a little gyro action here, or if I can drop the rear suspension enough, see if we can't get a better view here. go. If I drop the rear suspension as low as I can, that should help us level out. And I'm also going to try to gyro myself up as I just do the mass removal. And we'll see how much that took away. Try to do it again. Mostly trying to track how much it's removing from beneath me. We're trying to. It looks like we're kind of leveling out there. We can always exit and take a look at it too. We notice our incline coming down. It looks like it's tried to level out. And that looks like some nickel there. Uh, don't need a ton of nickel. It does look like I will be boring through it, which is unfortunate. What I really want is that iron straight ahead. And we'll just keep going towards our GPS as best we can. And it looks like we're on the edge of the iron. So that's actually pretty good for us. And we can just turn on our regular drill and we can collect some of that iron. We'll get some of that nickel there too. And this is ideally where we want to be right here. We want to be collecting that iron for the mass of our building instead of stone. We'll go into our refinery and we see everything that we've got collected there. Let's get rid of that stone first. Then we want the nickel towards the back end. We don't need a ton of nickel. But just like the cobalt, nickel tends to build up really fast in our inventories. Now that we've hit pay dirt, we can take some time to reassess our rover and probably build a whole new one. That way we don't have to be constantly plagued about the ever-looming despawn of our initial rover pod. So until next time, go forth and build great things.